here we are. Some of the stuff that you're working on um, with uh, with anxiety and people with um, hiring, if, who has, if, do horror fans tend to have higher or lower anxiety and then getting into uh, horror as possibly a coping mechanism or a training mechanism, possibly even a therapeutic tool. I'd really love to chat about all of that. <laughs> if you would, if you wanted to throw in some stuff about haunted houses or whatever, cause it's that time of year, um, feel free, but I'll let you steer the ship about a, a little bit. Um, and I'll, ha I'll have a zillion questions. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe a good place to start would be to think about, you know, what's the, what's the pur purpose of anxiety? What does it do? Right. Um, it's not just maladaptive, right? It's adaptive to have some anxiety about things. Otherwise you would be entirely unmotivated. Um, and so when you have anxiety, what you do is you, you're hypervigilant. So you surveil your environment for threats. You ruminate on past things that happen in order to try to improve them. You predict, try to predict future events in order to better handle them. Um, but kind of at the, at the center of all that is this idea of dealing with threatening situations, right? Uh, and I think that morbid curiosity is very similar. It's very much about dealing with threatening situations. It's more on the learning side, like learning about them, but it's very much about learning how to deal with threats. And again, this is not um, necessarily kind of the uh, what people are cognizant of. You know, they don't go into a horror movie thinking, all right, now I'm going to learn how to deal with, you know, <laughs> scary things in my life. Um, mm -hmm. But people with anxiety are not really doing that either, right? Uh, it's sort of a, an, a subconscious almost kind of process. Um, and so, you know, even at that very first level, uh, we can see that morbid curiosity and anxiety have similarities, like in what's very central to them, which is kind of learning about threats. Um, and so when I, when I started thinking about that, I was like, well, I wonder then, and I, and I heard stories from a lot of horror fans, um, about then read op-eds, uh, that people had written about being a horror fan and, and having anxiety, which seems weird, right? Seems like why would someone who has anxiety seek out, you know, kind of the, the common explanation for why people watch a movie is escapism, right? Which I don't think is wrong, but then you have to explain like why people who are, are feeling anxious or have anxiety are escaping into a world that's meant to produce anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. And so I ran some studies showing that, you know, yeah, horror fans do tend to be more anxious, um, you know, more likely to be, to be diagnosed with anxiety, to uh, have high trait anxiety. Um, yeah. And so the idea so if, that, if anxiety, was, if anxiety was like if measured in units or something right. like that in your brain, if we were, if we were right. with these perfect robots built or something like that. And, and, and you had anxiety units and you were mm -hmm. already kind of redlining it in your anxiety <laughs> units. Why would yeah. you throw more anxiety yeah. units on top of that? Exactly. Exactly. If your character's maxed out on anxiety, why are you trying to pick up anxiety potions? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think, you know, from this actually came from just talking to people who are horror fans that also said they had anxiety, right? This was a, not a theoretic, it was, it was a little bit theoretically driven, but it was really kind of just like talking to people and seeing what they, what's, what's going on in their lives. Right. And what I was finding was that a lot of people were saying it's a way for them to deal with, um, anxieties that they have about the world. And sometimes that means it helps them disengage from worrying about things, um, and you might say, well, any movie could do that, right? True, but actually I think horror does it particularly well, and it does it particularly well for people with anxiety because, again, if anxiety is about surveilling and attending to threats, then if you're watching a movie whose whole point <laughs> is to present a threat and make you feel anxious, you're going to be sucked into that movie, into that plot, much more easily than you would, say, uh, you know, a romance movie or maybe an action movie or maybe a, a drama or some other kind of movie. And mm -hmm. so I think it probably pulls people who are anxious in and immerses them. Right. And then once they're pulled in and immersed, uh, they're now feeling anxious, uh, about whatever's on the screen or if they're reading a book about whatever's, you know, in the book or playing a video game about whatever's on the video game, but they're not 
they're not ruminating about uh, whatever bad thing happened to them earlier in the day or worrying about what's going to happen to them next week or being anxious about something that they maybe can't even identify, right? I mean, one of the most uncomfortable things about generalized anxiety disorder is that you feel anxious and you don't know why. Right. And so when you watch a horror movie, play a scary game, go to a haunted house, whatever it might be, you're kind of giving a source to that anxiety, right? You're, you're transferring it in some ways to some other thing. And then once mm. you transfer it, it becomes a little more controllable, right? So if I'm feeling anxious about a horror movie now, there are a lot of ways that I can control that that I just can't do uh, with my own anxiety. So for example, I could turn on the lights. Now the intensity of that threat is lower. I could mm. turn the sound down. Now the intensity of that threat is lower. I could read Wikipedia to see how the movie ends. Uh, now the intensity of that is lower. And I can't do those things in my own life about my own worries. And so it can kind of help in the moment by, by shifting your focus to the threat in the movie and then allowing you to regulate that a little bit. <laughs> Hold on a second. I just had, uh, man, as, as I had a hundred uh, questions, I was excited. <laughs> I just had, I just had this pop into my head, this common experience of the, that, uh, frankly, it was always a bit annoying to me. And this might be a way of, of reframing things um, of watching a movie with someone, usually like one of my significant others or something like that uh, in the mm -hmm. past and and having them uh, be uh, asking where it's going the whole yeah. time <laughs> there, during the yeah. And you're so, like, I don't know, I'm watching uh, it with you. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, why would you ask me that? Or like, and sometimes I also know or I think I have a feeling where I'm like, but yeah. you can't, you don't spoil the <laughs> movie. And that's so interesting. So you might predict that someone that has higher anxiety might, um, might, they might need be to more it likely down a to bit. use something yeah. like that as a coping yeah. mechanism. Exactly, exactly. Wow, that's so and cool. So the, whole, the whole point of that in the yeah. long term, the idea is that it's very similar to exposure therapy um, in the sense that, you know, maybe the first time I watch, you know, the first 10 times I watch horror movies, I've got to look up the plot. I've got to like turn on the lights. Mm -hmm. But as I become more comfortable with feeling anxious, you know, you remember we talked about earlier the reason I might not watch horror movies is I'm afraid of how I will react or how I will, it will make me feel. But like what you, what you learn from doing that is that especially, and this is especially true with stuff we've done at haunted houses, you know, your heart, your heart rate might be 120, like getting ready to go into the haunt and you might be really afraid and really worried. But what you realize is the, that feeling does not map uh, like in, a, in a direct way onto the outcome. So just because you feel, you know, if I'm face to face with a grizzly bear, my heart rate might also be 120 and I might also be sweating and freaking out. But the outcome of that <laughs> is really bad. If I'm in a haunted right. house, my heart rate might be 120 and I'm sweating and freaking out. But I come out on the other side and realize that those feelings don't always map in a, in a linear way with the outcome. So just mm -hmm. because I'm feeling really anxious and you know, then several weeks later, maybe you're feeling anxious about something, you're worrying about something. The idea is that you can then think, okay, just because I'm feeling this extreme doesn't mean that the outcome is going to match that, right? The outcome may not be as extreme as what I'm thinking, which is almost always the case, right? People who are feeling anxious about something, typically they overestimate it, they right? overestimate mm -hmm. the consequences. And so the idea is that, especially if it's guided by a therapist, horror might be a really good way for people to uh, learn how to both identify their emotions. So like if you're feeling anxious, you learn how to kind of identify the source of that but also learning how to regulate those emotions, regulate those negative emotions that people tend to avoid, like for good mm -hmm. reason, you know, I don't want to go through my, I, I want to typically minimize the amount of anxiety I experience in my daily life. And so I don't have good experience with that. I don't have good experience feeling anxious and then getting over it. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of research with kids, especially showing that adventurous and thrilling and risky play and scary play um, can be really important in the development of resilience. Um, so if kids are sheltered too much, they never learn how to deal with anxious feelings that are eventually going to come up because being an adult kind of sucks. And like <laughs> you get anxious sometimes about things. Uh, yeah. and when you were, you know, if you, if you practiced feeling that as a kid and kind of overcoming it and, and you kind of develop self-confidence and your ability to overcome 
bad events, right? right? And so yeah. this goes to the this goes back to the study that we published la- around this time last year, showing that in the early months of the pandemic, horror fans and morbidly curious people were more resilient during the pandemic. So they were scoring higher on psychological resilience than people who were fans uh, were not fans of horror movies or people who were fans of other movies. 